Hello all, this video is on using soil NPK sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico and then getting the values, uh, soil values, NPK values. We are using NPK sensor with baud rate 9600 and uh, uh, supply voltage is 12 volt. It has got uh, stainless steel uh, arms and then the wires connection is uh, RS485. The blue wire and yellow wire is for uh, uh, RS485 communication and the brown and black for the supply. We will be using this uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. This model is without Wi-Fi model. In uh, upcoming videos we will be using Wi-Fi model. In this video we are using this uh, basic Pico model and RS485 to USB dongle like this is used for uh, initial uh, uh, evaluation of the values. This we have done in the previous video, this uh, same as that in the previous video. For uh, communication with Raspberry Pi Pico, we will be using RS485 to 2T, uh, TTL. There are two types of modules available in the market. One is with uh, uh, without auto direction, that is uh, DE and RE pins to be enabled in code. We are not going to use that model. We will be using this auto, auto direction enabled mode. In this model, you can see the RXTX pins printed. So directly you can connect that RXTX pins. So no auto, uh, no direction enable is uh, required in the code. We'll be using that model. Initially, let us connect the RS485 to USB dongle to the uh, PC. Provide the power supply 12 volt to the NPK sensor and plug in the NPK sensor to the soil, uh, target soil. The soil should be slightly wet for uh, better results. Plug into it uh, to the soil and then notify the uh, USB COM port allotted to the RS485 dongle. This is the simple connection. And we will be using the uh, RS485 sensor configuration tool. This is the same tool as we did in the previous video and select the soil, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium all in one uh, from the drop down menu and then uh, select the COM port and the baud rate is 9600, device address is 1, and click on connect. The device, uh, the COM port is the one allotted to the USB to RS485 dongle and then click on connect. At the right hand side you have got the option to change the baud rate and then uh, the device address also. We are not going to use that now. Now click on connect. Now you can see the data being uh, read from the NPK sensor and displayed as uh, decimal values in mg per kg. First is the nitrogen value, next is the uh, phosphorus and then the potassium value. All three values are displayed. So the relevant hex code, the array of hex code is uh, sent by the software automatically and then the resulting data in hex is converted to decimal and displayed at the bottom. At the right hand side bottom, you can see the hex code being sent. Now let us analyze the hex code. So for that, disconnect the so software from the COM port and then the copy the send query data and paste it inside a notepad and then separate all the three hex array codes that is the first array for uh, N, second array for uh, phosphorus and the th third array for potassium. All the three array codes you separate it out. 0 1 is the device address, 0 3 is the command for uh, reading holding registers and the last two bytes that is the CRC 16 which is very very important. This is the cyclic redundancy check error checking uh, done using the uh, using 16-bit CRC implemented as two 8-bit uh, bytes at the last. CRC is appended to the frame as the last field as you see in the X code. Now let us analyze the CRC as it is very important in the code. Uh, let us use the online CRC calculator. Link is given in the description below. Go visit that site and then paste the uh, initial hex code without the CRC uh, 16 last two bytes paste the initial hex array code and select the input as hex and output as hex at the bottom is the result CRC 16 mod bus that is the uh, result you can see at the bottom 
the CRC hex code is written as low byte first and the high byte as a second. So if it is uh, result is 0C E4, you have to write it as E4 and then 0C. Same way, let us copy the values for the phosphorus and paste it to the CRC generator and then click on uh, CRC 16. The result is CCB5. We have to write it as B5 CC, low byte first and the high byte as the second. Same way for the potassium also. Uh, we can calculate in the same way. Uh, so now let us uh, find out the CRC code for getting all the three values, NPK values. Now let us copy the hex array and paste it uh, to the CRC generator and uh, at the end instead of 0001 let us change it to 0003 that is the initial one is the address and the second one is the 03 command and then the starting address is 1e 001e and the number of registers to read is 3 0003 starting address is 1e and then click on generate and then you will get the hex code which is uh, cd65 you have to write it as 65 and cd at the last you have to write it as 65 and then cd you change the number of registers to 03 and then append the crc as 65 and then cd this uh, hex array is very important we'll be using this hex array to get all the npk values in the code we'll be sending this hex array uh, hex array from within the code and then get all the three values starting from register 1a e, we'll read 1f20 all the three values we'll read and display using the raspberry pi pico so note on this hex array which uh, we have generated for uh, all the three values of npk now let us uh, uh, do the connection with the raspberry pi pico the power source to RS485 TTL can be sourced from the VBUS or VCS pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico. That is the top first one or the second pin. You can take the 5 volt as this RS485 TTL works on 3.3 as well as 5 volt. When you connect the USB to PC, you will get 5 volt at VCS and VBUS. You can use any of the pins to as the power and then ground to ground and gpu0 is the tx pin and gp1 is the rx pin that is connected straight to rs485 to ttl that is tx to tx rx to rx and ground is common the connection is not reverse the connection is straight and at the other end there are a and b pins that is the rs485 connection yellow wire is uh, blue wire is b and yellow wire is a and power source to NPK sensor is 12 volt. We will be using Tony Python IDE. Open the Tony, Tony Python IDE and uh, you should install the MicroPython UF2 file. Visit the MicroPython official site and then download the latest .uf2 firmware file and then uh, drop it onto the Pico folder. Once you uh, connect the Pico to PC, a folder will open. You drop that on on the U of two file, and then select under the interpreter MicroPython uh, Pico. Now you'll, you'll get the chevrons at the bottom. Now let us see the code. Here we import machine and then import time and then define a function, which is the uh, which is send modbus query function, and then you are dot write to write the bytes of array. The custom query is the byte array and uh, this is the array we hex array we generated using the crc code generator if you check up the previous that notepad you can see the 01 is the 01 is the address 03 is the command 001 is the starting address 0003 is the number of registers to read and then the CRC code, which is very, very important. This is 6, 5 and CD. You cannot change it. If any change is there, you will not get any data. And then the uh, never ending loop starts. You can send the Modbus query. That is a custom query you send after a delay. You get the response to your underscore read. And then you split out the, uh, 
n value p value and k value and convert it to a decimal to display now let us store this in the computer for backup store it as dot py file and uh, to draw and also you can store it inside the pico as main dot py no other naming is allowed main dot py store it as main dot py and then click on the green uh, run button now you get the data at the bottom shell that is the n value p value k value all three values are displayed as we uh, as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, rs485 sensor configuration too you get the same data at the bottom shell thank you for watching